NPH. Leaders in Canadian basketball. It's an exciting time in, the, in this country for the game of basketball, Dan. And when we're talking about numbers, since 2008, 224% in revenue growth in this country. Some of it, of course, is due to new families moving in from different countries who love basketball. But a lot of it has to do with you and your team and what you guys have done. How have you guys been so successful with one team, with one team here in Toronto, to kind of grow the game throughout the country? Well, I mean, we exist, and one of the reasons why NBA Canada exists and why we have offices in other parts of the world is to grow fans in those markets. So f for us, it comes down, there's a few sort of things that we do uh, to do that. One of them is you want to make sure you have the right sort of media footprint. So in, in, in this country, you mentioned the team and the Raptors being Canada's only team. We work very closely with MLSE. Uh, there are partners on our broadcast business to make sure that we have a nice wide distribution of national Raptor games and then other NBA games on the air. So if you have a, <clears throat> if you have a, you know, a good sports package in Canada, you're going to be able to get in Canada almost 400 games a year on your on your television so that's that's sort of step one um, the next piece would be um, to try to foster participation and so and that's where we've seen tremendous growth you've mentioned it in terms of um, new immigration I mean we're, we're, we've been on the right side of some of that um, if you look at the countries where some of the countries where um, the most of Canada's immigrants are coming from countries like China and the Philippines those are two countries where basketball is very very popular so they're coming you know with the love of the game to Canada um, and they're you know they're, they're participating in numbers like we haven't seen before basketball right now is the number one sport in Canada amongst Canadians between the age of 12 and 17 for example um, one of the th we just actually yesterday launched uh, an initiative called mba.com slash playball and it, it's a it's a very simple website designed to um, help parents find a place for the kids to play ball simple as that um, there's almost 700 uh, clubs that are sort of signed up on this site uh, and we worked with Canada basketball and all the provinces to sort of get this initiative out there just to make it easy for people to play so those are the kinds of things we do um, and it's it's really exciting right now to see how fast it's grown and and, and ultimately when you look at the tra trajectory of where it's going it's, uh, it's it's very very exciting well the great thing about basketball is you, you don't have to necessarily play it in an organized fashion it's very accessible, right? So it's it's accessible. It's it's pretty cost effective. You can there's, there's hoops on every driveway and every schoolyard, in, you know, in the country, um, and so you can. So for us, we we think that that transition from from watching games and then playing it, whether it be on the schoolyard or in, in an organized setting, um, that's all great. Um, for us, we we know that if kids play in an organized way. It, it, you know, their propensity to become an NBA fan becomes bigger or a Raptor fan or a Laker fan or a Celtics fan becomes bigger. So, um, so we, we, we want to encourage that and that's what play ball is all about. So it really is about, if you go on the site and you would type in, I live in this section of this city, it'll, it'll indicate to you very simply the closest place to play in your, in your vicinity. So, and it's really designed to get people to play into, to get them into programs that are organized, that are well run, um, that are sort of affiliated with the provincial basketball associations where they're going to get good coaching and you know, have a good structure to learn the game and ultimately become a, a, a better player and a, and a bigger fan. Now, on, on, in terms of the marketing perspective of helping get, grow the game through numbers, you have the, had had the opportunity to kind of work with the NBA prior to coming to NBA Canada, helping out in Europe with that situation there. And then you also had a stint at TSN. So on the outside looking in, what did you see that you could have helped immediately before taking this position? Well, I think... Um I think for for um, sort of growth of the NBA in Canada, there, there you know, it, it, it's not unlike some other countries. And I, mean, I think when you look at the, M the other countries where the NBA is in, um, <clears throat> the European countries would be very similar in terms of, um, <clears throat> you know, in terms of GDP and, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of state of the game versus some of our emerging markets. So if you look at a, a, a market like India for the NBA, we're in a, it's a different kind of growth structure and trajectory than Canada would be. <clears throat> so one of the things that we sort of, one of the pieces we sort of pulled out of the playbook from Europe and brought to Canada was this notion of playing one of the things they do, we do overseas in Europe a lot, and what I was there to do back in 2003 was run exhibition games. So when I was in Europe uh, in '03, my job was to um, uh, was to you know organize and promote. There was we had a game. It was the Spurs and the um, and the Grizzlies in Paris. Right. Tony Parker's sort of first time back playing at home, and then uh, the Grizzlies went down and played FC Barcelona in Barcelona, and that was Paul Gasol's first time going back home and playing his old club team. So uh, we've we've sort of taken that 
idea. And, and we last year we created a, a, an entity called the NBA Canada Series. And what we try to do is play two games a year outside of Ontario. Um, not everyone, if you don't live in Toronto, you don't get to see live NBA basketball uh, all that often. So trying to bring the game, make it more accessible, bring teams into the market, um, do some, some activations on the ground that kind of get fans closer to the teams. Um, and uh, and really kind of use those as opportunities to promote the game, and and we try we try to find stories or links between um, you know the cities or the players and where we're playing. So last year, as an example, we played in Winnipeg, and the and the Timberwolves came up and played in Winnipeg. You know, geographically, it's you know they're they're they're, they're it makes some sense. So those are the kinds of things we're doing this year. Actually, we're organizing a game in Montreal um, uh, on October twentieth. It's going to be the Celtics and the T Wolves in Montreal. Um, Celtics and and you know Montreal have a bit of affinity in terms of geography, so that was sort of the link there. Um, but you know again, exhibition games and trying to to get the game live NBA basketball playing or played in markets where they don't see it very often is uh, it was definitely something we picked up from what we did in Europe. Actually, leads into my next question because uh, being that there's only one team in ter in Canada, being the Toronto Raptors, it's hard for say a fan out in Victoria or a fan out in St. John to really be emotionally attached to the Raptors because they're so far away. So, does it really matter to you guys here at NBA Canada whether uh, the the rest of Canada is a fan of the Toronto Raptors, or is it does it matter? Is it more important for them to just be a fan of the game, the fan of the NBA? Well, I think um, you know. Um, there's lots of factors that go into, you know, who your favorite team is. And so we know, if you look at, say, on the baseball, the baseball analogy, when the Jays were winning World Series, the World Series, they were Canada's team. And, uh, and, and they still are. And they, they've sort of, that's sort of continued over the last few years. Um, so we know that when, when the Raptors on the court, you know, take the next step, there's going to be a huge following in Canada. And that's great. That's great for everybody. It's great for us. us it's great for MLSC, our, you know, our biggest partner up here. That's phenomenal. But if people are, you know, we know that there's lots of Laker fans in the west on the west coast. We know there's lots of Celtics fans on the on the east coast. We know that in Central Canada, that whether it be the Timberwolves or the Chicago Bulls, there's lots of other fans, and we see that through licensed product sales. We see that through, you know, ratings to games outside of uh, Raptor games. Um, so that that's good as well. That's that's you know, for us, if if you're a, if you're an NBA fan and you're you know. Um, you know, and you've got that favorite team, that favorite player. Um, it's a good thing. And what and what we've tried to do, especially from a digital perspective, is to try to um, have people feel those passions and, and sort of fulfill those 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 uh, passions. If you're a fan of, of of any team, so the product that we've used um, to do that is a, a product called NBA League Pass, <clears throat> which is the out of market package. And we we've we the out of market market package for games. So I've mentioned before, if you have a a, a nice sports package on your television, you get <clears throat> upwards of 400 games the other 800 games or 900 games that happen in the nba that's what league pass provides you with so if you're a fan of the of the bulls and you live in in saskatchewan you can buy league pass you can watch games on your ipad you can watch games on your phone and you can you know fuel your passion for that team uh, through products like that and those products didn't exist you know 10 years ago so um those are the kinds of things we're trying to do to um to uh again build NBA fans, whether they be Raptor fans or other teams. Actually, I think Canada right now, sitting at this spot, going into this season, was the second largest uh, country in international league pass sales, if, right. I'm, if, I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. Do you know what was number one? I don't. Who is it? It was Australia. Australia number one. Which which has a very low amount of TV games on the air compared to Canada. Right. So uh, it, it just sort of is another reason. It's just another proof point of sort of the how popular the game is right now. And heading into this season, it's possible that we could take that number one spot with the amount of Canadians that have been drafted over the past couple of seasons. Seven Canadians in the last three years. There's sure to be more coming up through the pipelines. Um, is there a plan to use these specific Canadians like the Tristan Thompsons, the Andrew Nicholsons to help market the game here in Canada? Absolutely. I think um, that's another sort of thing we've, we've tried to do in other markets around the world. And, and play ball, I, I didn't talk about the actual TV spot for play ball. You'll see it on the air. It's, it's going to be running in all of our games. It'll run on TSN and Sportsnet and uh, each of the Rogers and Bell networks, <coughs> um, their sports networks. And it, 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 it has Nicholson, it has Bennett, it has um, Kelly Olenek in it, it has Jay Triano in it. So it's a combination of those guys. There's some Raptors in, in the spots. Terrence Ross is in it. Quincy Acey's in it. Um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so there's there's Raptors, there's there's Canadian there's uh, Canadian men's players, and there's also some Canadian women's players too. And it really is just trying to to, to push the message that it doesn't matter, you know, what gender you are, you know, um, 
basketball is a great sport to play. So um, absolutely, there will be we will have those discussions. And and I mean, it's a great when you think about when you think about um, the affinity that Canadians will have when, when, once we get more and more Canadians into the game and playing at a high level. You mentioned Anthony Bennett going number one overall, um, and we know that you know in the future there could, there could be more Canadians drafted high in the NBA. It gives us another sort of lever to push to try to grow the sport which is which is something we haven't had outside of Steve Nash maybe um, a few years ago it, it's it's great to see and it's great to see that it's not just one or two guys but there's a whole crop of them coming through it's great for the game you mentioned Steve Nash and he was kind of the only all-star in the last couple of years that was Canadian with the high draft picks there's going to come an expectation of these guys being all-stars and on the topic of all-stars most people want the All-Star game here sometime in Toronto, in Canada. Are you guys working with the Raptors and helping to bring the game here to Canada? And if so, if it does come, how are you going to incorporate the rest of the country if that does happen? Well, the, the, the league has, um, has indicated we've only announced the next All-Star. So next year's All-Star will be in New Orleans. Um, and we haven't announced the next, the next ones. Those are all sort of being worked on as we speak. So there's no imminent announcements to make or anything like that. Not um, any news. Yeah, no, you're not bringing any news today, but, um, but, uh, you know, if that were to happen, yeah, we would definitely work very closely with MLSC and the league office in New York on, on how we could try to make All-Star, uh, you know, a, a national event. And there's, there's been some interesting, uh, over the last few years between the Grey Cup and between the Olympics in 20, uh, 2010 in Vancouver, there's been some really interesting activations that have help do that for those events and so we would again if that day comes and if it were to happen we would definitely uh you know again work with our partners to try to try to make it more of a national event and the last question uh before we let you go um it's been termed kind of the golden age of canada here in terms of basketball mm -hmm. we were talking a little bit off air how important it is possibly for the game of, of basketball here in canada if this national team does make it to next year's world championships out in spain um how important would it be for you guys here at NBA Canada to see these guys make it at World Championships? It would be very important, and it would be we're you know we're to take off your NBA hat just as a Canadian basketball fan. I mean, there would be nothing better than to see Canada go on an extended run of success in the you know in the world and in the Olympics for the next bunch of years. Um, but we we saw it. We saw it in 2000. Even uh, again, a, a glimpse when Canada made that run at the Olympics in Sydney. You know our. Um, we saw spikes in merchandise sales. We saw spikes in online traffic. We saw we saw spikes in, um, in even participatory numbers. So we know it can have an impact. And uh, and uh, you know Canadians are proudly and fiercely uh, proud to be Canadians. And so um, success on the international on the international floor is, is not like anything else that we could um, do sort of on our own here at the NBA. It's 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 something that truly is a Canadian trait. And if it happens, we're gonna be we're gonna be really excited about it. What's the new and upcoming things that we can talk about here uh, that you can give us some secrets a little bit? What can you talk about here to the rest of the Canada that's happening here at the NBA Canada office that we can look forward to? Well, um, again, we're not breaking any, any news today. <laughs> I, was, I, was hoping to get, I was hoping to catch you off guard with that one, but what, what can maybe give us a little insight to, to what else is being planned or, or maybe uh, what we can look forward to in the upcoming months? Well, I mean, I think for us it, it always comes down to... Um, to um, how, what are we trying to do to grow fans? And so one of the things that's actually coming up is actually launching this weekend in, in Edmonton as our NBA Big Tour. So uh, we're going to five markets. It's going to be in malls across Canada. We're going to Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal. Um, so that's going to be a market over the next five weeks. There'll be NBA, live, you know, be NBA players in each market. Um, lots of you know stuff to win, free prizes, activations. Um, there's going to be you know turn, you know three on three tournaments. Everything all sort of wrapped up into one day at uh, at. Uh, uh, these malls so that's going to be something to look at you, you can get all information if you just go on a, on a facebook and and type in nba big tour canada you'll you'll get information on it so it'd be great if folks would go and check that out so in the short term that's the next thing but um we got some things up our sleeve we'll uh which we'll, we'll, we'll announce in time we'll definitely be here back in this office talking about it when that does happen uh dan mckenzie nba canada here on northpolehoops.com uh,